I trust that Jesus did that, and I accept it. I trust what he did for me. Now, the question is, if salvation is by believing or by faith, faith in what? What should a person's faith be in? If faith saves us, what is it that saves us? We're saved by what? Well, according to the Bible, and we'll get to this here in a minute, we're saved by faith in the blood. Now, I'm going to take you through the scriptures and give you an understanding of salvation. And I hope that you will understand what salvation is. Because many people today, they read the Bible and they don't get it. They want to make salvation something they do. And they, they, it's like they're blinded to what salvation is. Now, do you understand that? Many people don't. Many people misunderstand salvation. They have what I like to call a bloodless gospel. And they try to teach salvation is come to God the best way you know how or however you want to, and it's okay. You don't have to come through the blood. Yet the entire Bible, and we'll look at the New Testament here in a minute, it's always through the blood atonement. Anyone try to tell you you can get to heaven without the blood. Even the lost religious pagans of their day understood this doctrine. reading through the book of Herodotus right now. Herodotus, what, lived 200 years after Jesus, or was it 200 before or something? I can't remember. But Herodotus was this ancient uh, historian. He's writing all this hearsay, basically. A lot of it's hearsay, where he traveled all around Egypt and other places, and he heard what they said was historical. He wrote it down. And, and I love history, so I'm reading Herodotus. But one thing that really jumps out is that all the ancients from all the way back even those that didn't worship the true God, they all believed in blood atonement. And they always had these festivals every year when they would come, and they would not come to their false gods without a blood sacrifice. Remember, they would not dare call upon God or their gods without blood. So salvation today the blood atonement has been made. Yet to come to God, how do we come to Him? Just as Abel came to God in the Old Testament through a blood sacrifice, the only way to come to God is through the blood atonement. So still, we have to come to God through the blood. So what happens if someone tries to get saved, but they bypass the blood of Jesus Christ? Wouldn't they go straight to hell? Who would bypass the blood of Jesus Christ? It's always been through the blood that a person is saved. Now Romans chapter 3 and verse 25, look at what the Apostle Paul tells us salvation is. Romans 3.25, whom God had set forth to be a propitiation. The word propitiation literally means the act of appeasing wrath. But it could also, I like to define it as, be defined as a, a substitute. Jesus Christ is our substitute. He's the one that was our sacrifice, our lamb in our place.
Just as Abel said, God, take this in my place. Jesus came. He's in my place. He's my substitute. He's my propitiation. He's my sacrifice of blood for my sins. So I I cannot come to God unless I come behind Jesus and say, take this blood in my place. Now what does the Bible say in Romans 3.25? Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. So He's my sacrifice when my faith is in His blood. The question was asked, what do we trust in? What do we believe in to be saved? We trust the blood atonement. We trust the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. That's salvation. It's not. Not our blood that we sacrifice that'll get us to heaven. It's not what we do. We can't get to God without the shedding of blood. There's no remission of sins. We can't even come to God unless there's some blood for us. And who shed His blood? Jesus Christ. Now. I want to call on God. Well, I have to come through the blood. So how do I call upon God? I trust that blood. When I trust the blood, Romans 3.25 says, Jesus becomes my substitute, my propitiation. He becomes my sacrifice. He now is the forgiveness of my sins because I, by faith, received what Jesus did for me. through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness. Notice what I'm doing. I'm declaring Jesus righteous. I'm saying, the only way I can come to you is through what you did. I, I trust your blood because that's the only thing that I, I can accept that will forgive me, so I come to you. That's understanding salvation. Calling through a blood atonement. You have to trust the blood. His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So Jesus Christ is the righteous. Now what does Romans chapter 5 and verse 9 say? Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. You know we're actually saved by three things. We're actually saved by grace through faith. We're also saved by faith, and we're saved by blood. We just saw that here. Three places in the Bible where it says justified. You know what justified is? It's an amazing word in English. Just if I'd. <laughs> you break that English word up, justified. Salvation is just if I'd never sinned. Because when I trust the blood atonement of Christ, God washes my sins away in His blood. I receive the forgiveness of sins, and in God's eyes, it's just if I'd never sinned. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, we're justified by grace. I believe it's verse 24. Being justified briefly by His grace. So we're justified by grace. Then in verse 28, I believe it is, it says we're, we are justified by faith. Nine says we're justified by blood. So T 
teaching of salvation, the way of eternal salvation, understanding salvation correctly is understanding that salvation is by God's grace, and it's by His grace that we're saved, through our faith, without our faith we can't be saved, so we have to place faith in the finished work of Christ. We certainly can't have our faith in what we do, or God will reject us like He rejected Cain. So, so salvation or justification is by God's grace through our faith in Jesus' blood. So how about it? Are you saved? Are you trusting the blood of Jesus Christ? That's salvation. Go to Romans chapter uh, 5 and verse 11. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear that salvation is by receiving through faith something. It's by receiving. It's by accepting. It's by taking. Yes, I'm going to use the word taking. Taking God up at His, His promise. is what you do. Taking, receiving, accepting. What is salvation? You have to receive it by faith. What do you Five eleven says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the what? Received the atonement. your faith is in the blood of Christ, that's when you've received the atonement. When you receive the atonement, that's when you get saved. And salvation is a free gift. It's being saved or trusting what Jesus Christ did for you. Now, go to 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Let me show you this. This is not a made-up doctrine of my own. <laughs> this is Bible. And if you actually read the entire Bible and understand it in the law of first mention, and you see it in light of history, what true religion has been throughout history, it's always had to come through a blood sacrifice. You cannot deny that Jesus is the blood sacrifice for the sins of the world and that salvation is by trusting the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. It's that simple. And yet so many misunderstand salvation. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So what does he say here? Redemption, being redeemed, bought back, saved, is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go back to Acts, chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 is an interesting book. The book of Acts is a hard book to understand because it's a book of transition. It's changing. But in Acts
Acts chapter 7, the Jews reject their Messiah for the final time. And then we see God starting to go more to the Gentiles for salvation because the Jews rejected their Messiah. And God comes to this guy named Philip, and he goes, Philip, there's this certain Ethiopian eunuch riding along, and he's reading the Bible. I want you to go talk to him. And in Acts chapter 8 and verse 30, well, actually verse 29, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his, this chariot. Verse 30, And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the, the prophet Isaiah, and said, watch what he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you have any understanding of the Scriptures? Do you understand it? Because that's the most important thing, is understanding. Because you can't be converted until you first understand. Here's what the eunuch said, verse 31. How can I except some man should guide me? Now, Philip came up and sat with him. Or sit with him. Verse 32, the place of the scripture which he read was this. Listen to what he read. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? Verse 35 says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The Lamb. He's reading in the Bible about a Lamb slain for somebody's sins. And Philip says, That's Jesus. He's the blood atonement. Trust him. And verse 37, and, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. So belief. What is that? Believing. And it's connected with believing or trusting in Jesus, who was the substitute. Who died in our place for our sin, who was the blood sacrifice for our sins. Ephesians 1.9, excuse me, Ephesians 1.7 says. This is so important because most of your modern day Christians preach a bloodless gospel. They leave out entirely the blood of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It's through the blood that we have remission of sins, redemption really, and we have forgiveness of sins. So the way to have sins forgiven is to come through the blood. And salvation is by faith, believing. Now if you deny that salvation is by faith or by believing, then you have a misunderstanding of the scripture. You don't understand salvation. Hopefully you'll come to that understanding that salvation is by believing. And then you'll ask the question, now, believe in what? The answer is you trust the blood. You trust the gospel. Now, you say, well, which one is it? I have people email, which one is it? Do I trust the gospel or I trust the blood? The gospel is the blood atonement of Christ. The gospel is all about the atonement. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel. It says in that verse, this is so important, it says, How that Christ died. 
for our sins. How did Christ die? Through shedding his blood. When Jesus died, he shed every drop of blood. He was buried. Where was Jesus buried? In the ground. I could take you to the book of Hebrews and show you where the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, cries out to God from the ground. So Christ died, was buried, buried in the same ground that his blood was shed into. And then he rose again the third day. When Jesus rose again, what did he do? The Bible says he took his blood and put it on the mercy seat in heaven. And then it says, twice according to the Scriptures. What does that mean, according to the Scriptures? Every single lamb sacrificed in the Old Testament was a type of the coming Lamb of God that shed His blood for the... ...for the sins of the world. Now, you want to understand salvation, and I hope you do, you need to understand the blood. Go to Hebrews with me. A lot of people today don't understand. And so they preach a bloodless gospel. And they're not preaching the gospel of salvation. And what they're doing is they're causing people to doubt whether they're saved or not. And people will email me or call me and say, you know, I was watching this guy or hearing this tape or listening to this preacher, and I'm just so confused. And I say, okay, let's look at the blood atonement. And after taking them through this, they're not confused. <laughs> they say, man, I trust what Jesus did. I trust his blood because that's the only thing that I can come to God through. I can't even call on God if I don't call with blood. <laughs> so I trust the blood atonement of Christ. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. Hebrews 9 12 says these words, talking about Jesus Christ in verse 11. It says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, like they did in the Old Testament, but Jesus Christ by his own blood entered in once into the holy place, having attained, obtained eternal redemption. Eternal. Redemption. So Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. He is the one that redeems. So we are not redeemed by our works or by what we do. It's all based upon what Jesus Christ did when he shed his blood for our sins. So what have you done with the blood? What have you done with the blood of Christ? Go to chapter 10 of Hebrews. Hebrews 10.10 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Jesus offered himself up what? On the cross, shedding every drop of blood. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Verse 12. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's eternal security. No, verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. How do I get to heaven? I can boldly say that the only way I have to enter into heaven is through that blood of Jesus Christ. Without the blood, without faith in the blood, I'm not even saved. You say, when did you trust the blood? July 29th, 1992, when I understood. Someone finally showed it to me. I've been in church for 18 years and never heard the message once of the gospel.
But oh, every night I'd call on God and cry and beg Him to save me and plead with God. I was trying to come to God, but I didn't have the blood. I'm so glad I understood. So you have to come to that understanding, and that's when you believe and you're saved. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. 10, 29 says, Now watch this. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. God warns us. He says, watch out for those people that don't look at the blood, that don't preach the blood. They don't think the blood's that important, like many in modern Christianity. Why? It says, Vengeance belongeth to me, I will recompense, saying the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yeah, it sure is. Are you preaching the blood? Have you received the atonement? Romans 5.11. That's when you get saved. Romans 5.11 says... You've received the atonement. Paul told those people in Rome, when you received the atonement, that's when you got saved. What did he say? He said in Romans 3.25, when you trust the blood, that's when you get saved. So have you done that? Have you trusted? Have you believed? Well, there's people out there preaching another gospel, and it's sad. What is that other gospel? Well, before I go there, look at what it says here in John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So salvation is by receiving something. How do you receive it? Chapter 11 and verse um, 4. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might bear well with him. Uh, accepting and receiving are biblical terms. Salvation is by faith or by believing. When you believe, you receive salvation, eternal life. It's accepting the gospel. Have you accepted, have you trusted the gospel? Well, the way to trust the gospel is to trust the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. So salvation is by accepting or by faith, believing or trusting in or taking the free gift that God offers. Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 18, over and over and over in that passage, it says salvation is a free gift, a free gift, a free gift, a free gift. You either take that free gift by faith and receive it, 
or you reject it. It's a gift that God offers. You receive that gift. And when you receive that gift. Some people say, well, that's stealing from God. <laughs> gives you a gift, then you take it, that's not a thief. It's receiving something that someone offered by grace. What a wonderful thing that someone offers a gift. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, I don't understand people's